Okay talk about Sjogren's syndrome, which you just heard about in the last lecture. Luckily, when we talk about taste and smell, a lot of the terms are scientific and kind of just make sense. You don't have to memorize them. You'll, you should read them and they should make sense, right? So agesia, a meaning not, is the loss of sense of taste. Hypogesia, hypo meaning low, is a decreased sense of taste. And dysgesia is a distorted sense of taste, okay? And you'll see one of the things that you can try for hypogesia is zinc supplements, because it turns out that zinc's inv involved in a lot of this. We have zinc fingers that bind um, uh, DNA. And so it's not a single target, but there's actually a fair amount of zinc deficiency. Up to a third of US people can be zinc deficient. So it's an easy, pretty harmless thing to, to try if a patient comes in and has recent hypogesia. OK, so for agesia, Sjogren's syndrome is clearly the most board testable. How can you have agesia? Agesia is I've lost a sense of taste, and I just talked about these three cells and different dimers, and I'm saying none of them work. The only way that all of that's affected, one way could be like a head trauma, right? So you're getting the signal, but you're not processing it correctly. But for Sjogren's syndrome, the way it's working is all of that machinery I talk about could work, but you don't have the saliva. You don't have the mucus that the GPCR needs to be in, so the taste can't come in. We're all, we've evolved for everything to work in an aqueous environment. So agesia is, um, or sorry, Sjogren's syndrome is an autoimmune disorder. So as you've heard from your immunology le lectures, women are much more prone to get autoimmune diseases. So they're 15 to 1 more likely to have Sjogren's syndrome. Sorry. Antibiotics and antifungals cause it. And yet again, epigenetics and age can cause it. So when you're looking at people that are 70 years versus 40 years, the 70 year olds are eight times more likely to have Sjogren's syndrome. Um, uh, and along with the total lack of taste, they can just have a metallic taste in their mouth. There's two types of Sjogren's syndrome, primary PSS Sjogren's syndrome and secondary Sjogren's syndrome. If people come into the clinic with like a very big problem of dry eyes, this is not an annual checkup and like, oh, the pollen's affecting my eyes. But if they're coming in and they're super red eyes, 0.5% of the time they have primary Sjogren's syndrome and 10% of the time they have secondary Sjogren's syndrome. Secondary is caused by rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. Primary is caused by this, these autoantibodies, and there's multiples of them. But 60% of people with primary Sjogren's syndrome have anti-Rho and anti-La uh, antibodies. And those are involved uh, in a lot of things. So you don't really need to know it. They go into the DNA. They are in the cytoplasm. They interact with each other. But it's board testable. It's in first aid. Know those two are related to Sjogren's syndrome. So you test for those, and if they're positive for them, they have primary Sjogren's syndrome. Um, so what can you do to treat this? You can try to give something to increase sweat to your saliva. You can also try to tamp down the immune system, B cell depletion therapy. And again, you can try zinc supplements. Zinc supplements are more for hypogesia, uh, general loss of taste. 